briefing before designing. Now, one thing, if you remember in our last class, thank you, welcome. In our last class, I mentioned the fact that when you want to design, your laptop is not the first thing you go to as a designer. Please and please, you guys might need to draw some things down. And I'm going to give you guys assignments for this. In this class, will be assignments. Uh -huh. As a designer, the greatest asset you have is not your laptop, it's not your phone, it's not your mouse, it's not your charger, it's none of the gadgets, it's your mind, it's your head. That's the greatest asset you have as a designer. Whether you're a designer, or a business owner, or anything at all you are doing, the, the worst thing that can happen to you is for you to lose your mind. If you lose your laptop, you can still get somebody's laptop and say, oh, please, lend me a laptop, I want to get this thing done. You can even get a new laptop. Do you understand? But if you lose your mind, how can you get it back? Do you understand? So the greatest asset you have as a designer is your mind. So today, we are going to be discussing how can you develop your mind? Because I can't just tell you guys to go and execute projects, go and do branding without you first knowing how can you research information. When, if you meet, um, if you have ever worked with any designer before, or maybe a creative director, when they tell you research, get inspiration, what comes to your mind? Do they mean that you go to Google and be typing, and I want to design, how do I start? Or you go to YouTube? No. But what do you mean by research? That's what we are discussing today. When someone tells you, I want to design a flyer, this is what I want to do, how do you talk to the person? How do you need the information that you be on the flyer? It's not all the information that a client gives you that you are going to work with. It's not everything that the, the, the client gives you that you are going to put on the design. There are sometimes that you change some things. There are sometimes you sieve out some information. There are sometimes that you just pick some things. And there are sometimes that everything the client gives you is what I'm going to use. There are things like that. Do you understand? So how do you know when to sieve out information? How do you know when to add new things? Because there are sometimes that sometimes you don't add some things. For instance, I did a brand new for a tomato paste brand, and that was on Sunday. Now, there was something that the, the client did not put in the brief. And it's the fact that that tomato is 100% original and LD. They didn't put it in the brief. But when I read the brief they gave me, one of the selling points is the fact that the, the, uh, the brand product is natural, it's LD. So I decided to just put something like, 100% natural tomato piece, an LG choice for you and your family, you know, something like that. Even though it was not stated in the brief, that should put it, the brief for the, the, the packaging, so it wasn't stated. I had to use my initiative to add that. So as a designer, what do you know when to add new things? What do you know when, how to, when to increase a particular form and reduce some particular information? When do you know how to do that? That's what I'm going to be discussing today. So I'll be using the course outline. First of all, the first thing on the outline is getting ideas for your project. Now, this is where you guys need to write. How do you get ideas for your, for your project? Is there anyone in this class that has worked on any graphic design project? Can you tell us how you got ideas for? Not necessarily elaborate, just something little. I worked, it was an amateur design a long time ago. I can't remember okay. how I did it. Okay. I did it. I yeah, I used the name of the program as my search. Uh, when I looked at the name, then I was able to picture what it was. You know what the, that program was revolution. So I had to look for an image that actually depicted that name. So I didn't need to put too much writing. So I there was like a guy that was trying to dance, but it was it was shape, his, his posture he had was like he was trying to rotate. So that's what I used in. And there was no this software. And I think it was Windows, um, what was that thing that they use? That was the design and stuff then. There are different ways to get ideas. Absolutely different ways. And I will share my own experience about how I got ideas for some projects. And what I worked on a branding, um, I think last month or last two months. The name of the brand is Go Get Us Home. I got the idea of that icon, of the brand icon. In a part, the, the ideas can come from anywhere and anytime, anyhow. Do you understand? Ideas will not come only in the morning or in the afternoon. No. But then, if ideas are not coming, how do you research? That's what I'm going to be discussing. Now, 
sites for getting inspiration. Number one, Pinterest. I know you know Pinterest, but please write it down. I know you know Pinterest. Pinterest.com. We are first talking about the sites before we talk move to other things. Yeah, apart from site, we have other ways of getting inspiration apart from site. But number one, Pinterest. Number two, Google. Pinterest.com. I mentioned Google. Instagram. Don't be surprised that I'm using this site. Instagram. You can, I get a lot of ideas from Instagram. A lot. Instagram. Facebook. Facebook. Twitter has been banned in Nigeria. But in a situation whereby it is on band, or you know when the band is gifted, aha, include Twitter. Twitter is another app for you to get ideas. Twitter, I mentioned Twitter. Um, also, Beyonce, Beyonce.net. I will type that in case you, because you guys are in music. Beyonce.net. Beyonce. Beyonce is another site where you can get design ideas. The next, Dribble. Dribble. Dribble.com. Dribble. Dribble has three Bs, not two. You know, normal Dribble is D R I W B L E dot com. But for this Dribble, it has three Bs. Meaning it is D R I B B B L E. Dribble. Creative blog. What's the one before that dribble? The one before dribble is Beans. Beans.net. B E H A N C E dot net. Beans.net. Then I was prepared creative blog. The blog is the G in the blog is actually a key. Creative blog. Then just creative.com. Just creative.com. The next one is a very long one. So let me first type it. Or I'll just see it as I'm typing it. After just creative, we have under consideration.com forward slash brand new. Under, like under, if everything is a word, we are writing everything together, no space. Under consideration.com forward slash brand new. I'm typing this in the chat box. Under consideration.com forward slash brand new. As of last year, this under consideration.com forward slash brand new is a free site where you can read um, about logo designs and all, and the case studies. But Currently, it is, you have to subscribe. I think it is $2 per month. I think so. Maybe per month or per day or per year. I don't have the two. I don't have the three. No, I'm, I'm not so sure yet, but I know there is a subscription around $2. Uh -huh. But then, in case you don't want to pay $2, why not? You can go ahead and just look at the redesign of logos. So if you want to see a case study of the redesign of Burger King, for instance, it's there. The, the, and the rebranding of GoDaddy, it's there. And several other big brands like that. Nissan, Volkswagen, uh, Andre's Brother. Um, there's this popular brand that, brand that rebranded. I can't remember. I think Mercedes. Mercedes also rebranded. Formula One. Okay, someone asked that what is a case study? How, how do one do about it? Okay, a case study is when you embark on a project and you want to explain why you embark on that project, your process of working on that project, and the end result or the impact of the project. When you document it, that's a case study. Case study is usually done for product design, it's usually done for VIEX, meaning that. When you, for instance, if you say WhatsApp is having some challenges, I think there should be some new features on WhatsApp. What should these new features be? Why is these new features important? Why are they necessary? Because WhatsApp is a product. Do you understand? So you have to tell us why do you want to add these new features? 
if you have this little trust, what will be the impact? When you tested it, do people like it? So when you when you do when you go through all that process, then you not document it. That's the case study. And trust me, one of the best things you can read when it comes to design is case study. Case studies usually changes it change our minds. It changes our perspective towards things. If so, if, for instance, if you read the case study behind the rebranding of Godaji logo, you'll be surprised. If you read the case study behind reading uh, the, the branding of Formula One, you'll be surprised. Do you understand? So this, all these products, when people rebrand them, I've seen someone that rebranded um, the, uh, the, the logo of Telegram. And looking at the new logo, I love it, actually. When I, went, when I read the case study, it's on Bian, Bian Zotnet. The council did case studies on Bian Zotnet and also on Dribble. When I read, when I read the, the case study, I learned the logo more because I, I saw I saw the essence of Telegram in that new branding. So do you understand? So when when people work on something that is already existing, or even if you want to just create a new product, totally new, they have to give a case study. Why did you work on this project? What was the challenges you faced? What was the process? When you tested it, was it working? What was people's uh, customer feedback? If you think if you if this thing is not into the market, what is the percentage of interest or revenue that the company is going to get? Everything like that is what you put in the case study. If you want to be about the case study, it's very simple. It's just for you to just write your pre-project phase, project phase, and post project phase. Pre means before you work on the project. What is that? What did you see? What did you notice? Like for instance, there's a girl on Twitter. Uh, my name is Lua Tenny. She rebranded the the website. Of um, American Airways or American Airlines. I can't remember exactly, but she rebranded their website. She redesigned everything. So she, she did a case study. And when, when the brand, when they saw it, they loved it. If you remember, there was a time uh, um, IBM Motors wanted to rebrand their logo and they put out a competition. And you know, they, asked, they got several entries, and the particular guy entry you know, won it. Farouk. I don't know if you guys know Farouk. So if you now read the idea, what, what did you think about why developing that um, that logo? That's a, that's a case study. Do you understand? I think I have two case studies on my Beyonce page. On Beyonce, you can also create your own page. I think I have two case studies there for Kuli Cosmetic. I'll check and maybe FA Products. I'll check. If there is none, I'll probably create one and share with you guys. For all, I'll look for um, case studies that other people have done and I'll share the link so that you guys can go through it. Okay, um, on that consideration, um, another funny app where you can get a uh, design inspiration is WhatsApp. Don't be surprised. WhatsApp, exactly WhatsApp status and WhatsApp groups. You can get a lot of design ideas. When you see people sharing their own designs, their flyers, and all. Uh, yeah. So that's for the site. Let's move on to. Things around you. Now, in, in the first class, during our onboarding session, if you remember, I told you guys to look for uh, two physical flyers and five online flyers that you should share with me. Now, the reason why I asked you guys to do it is because of, is I want you guys to have an idea of how to get ideas. Now, you won't believe that those flyers that you guys sent to me, if you want to create a design, I can actually look at maybe, for instance, Linda's flyers. I can check everything. And just draw ideas from everything, put them together, and put them in my own. And if I show you everything and you see my own, you will not, you will know that I copied some things or borrowed some elements from leaders' flyers. Do you understand? That's silly, like an artist. We are still going to talk about that. I'm not sure if it's in this part, but then we are still going to talk about that. So it's very important for you to know how you can draw inspiration and draw ideas from even physical flyers. Whenever I'm working on the road. And I see people um, sharing flyers. If I'm working on the road and people are sharing flyers, I usually collect it. Not because I want to come for the program or I want to, I want to attend. No. Sometimes I just collect it, just want to just look at the design. If the design is a very good one, I keep the flyer. I have a folder where I keep my flyers at all. A very small folder. I keep every flyer. Sometimes I'll be working on the road, I'll see a flyer on the floor, I'll pick it up. No matter how dirty it looks, I'll pick it up. I'll clean it. If it's a good flyer, 
I'll, I'll, I'm taking it home. If he's not a good flyer, I'll drop it. Do you understand? Because these players as well have good designs and also bad designs. So it doesn't mean that every player you see has, a, has good designs. No. And if you don't feed your eyes with good designs, you cannot create good designs. If you want to be, be able to create good and awesome designs, you have to create, you have to uh, feed your eyes with good designs. So because one of the entrance to your mind is your eyes. Oh, if they ask, how do you do a good design? Very good. I, I, I love this. I love this interaction. How do you do a good design? In our last class, we discussed design elements and design principles. A good design is going to have those elements and principles well used. So if, if you are looking at a flyer, for instance, and you are seeing the color, the color is going off, it's okay off. That automatically tells you that this design is not a good design because something is wrong with the color. Or maybe you are looking at the front and the front is, is looking very well, like something is happening here. That is not a good design because the front has not been used well to communicate the message. Do you understand? Um, when you see a, a bad design, usually you will know because all the information will be processed. You will be able to read. A good design is always is something that always work. You know, it works almost every time. So that even if you read the information now, if you see it again, if you still want to read the information, it's easy for you to read. It's easy for you to navigate. There's something called um, the the transportation of the eyes in design. It's basically eye movement. How does the eye move? Our eyes move in a Z direction, a zigzag direction. If you want to read, you, you start from the left, then you read to the right, then you go to the left, then you go to the right, then you go to the left, then you go to the right. A good design is going to implement this in its design. So if you see a good design, and you have to go and start reading from the right, then that means that something is wrong with that design. That design is actually probably meant for Arabians because it's, it's, they, are the, they are the ones that read from the right to the left. The, the people that read Arabic, they usually write or read from right to left. So that kind of design that the designer wants to read from right to the left, it should probably be used in maybe um, UAR or something. <laughs> I meant uh, Dubai. That's United Arab Emirates. Emirates. Do you understand? That's UAE. Yeah, of course, I'm learning. Because I'm Nigeria. This way. <laughs> so I hope you guys got what I'm saying. So that is just one out of several elements of design or several principles of design. Because when you are designing, you have to also consider the fact that some star has migrated. <laughs> so if, if you want to design, you have to um, consider the fact that people are going to read from the left to the right. Do you understand? So, and also, a good design is probably is going to have hierarchy. What is hierarchy? Or let, instead of me calling it hierarchy, let me just call it visual hierarchy. Now, what is visual hierarchy? Visual hierarchy is the ability for a design to be able to tell you what to read first, what to read next, then what to read next, and what to read last. So, for instance, um, I would like to share my screen. Let me go share my screen. I want to show you how visual hierarchy is being used in one of our designs. A minute, guys. A minute. Okay. I'll show my screen now. One of the things that makes you know that this design is a good design is the fact that when you look at this. Design. What do you see first? Looking at this design, a, a good designer would know that people need to read information. And if people, if the if why people are reading information, if they get lost in the midst of their information, then it means that the designer has not delivered well. Okay, someone said, I saw this. I saw the facilitators after the title exactly. Actually, I wanted you to see the facilitator after the title. It's only this text, this facilitator's text. And I purposely use a yellow background here because yellow draws attention, followed by the words underlined in yellow. Now, that is me controlling your eyes. Do you understand? Now, let me, let me go to 
Let me go to um, a very similar design, something different. Just look at this. Look at this. What you're going to see in this first, the first like problem is it is close. Because it is very big and it's easy. It's like it's taking up the entire space on that design. I'm calling attention to something. Closed. Power of choice with the red rectangle. I hope you guys can see that. Looking at this design, the first thing you are probably going to see is this red rectangle. Yeah, bring our attention. Exactly. Especially to the car, then you are seeing power of choice. This turns out to know a good design. If it's a bad design, this power of choice will probably be in the middle. All these things that are listed here will be under it. This one will be under it. Everything will just be clustered. You'll be able to read it. So a good, a good design shows you how you should move your eyes from this section to 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 this section. Most companies Sorry, you, sir. Okay. So is it okay to say that a good design helps control the eyes? Yes, you can say that. But there's, okay. there's a different way of access to designs. I, I, as a designer, you have to uh, you have to take your, your audience through a journey. So when you are designing, you are thinking, how people look at this thing? When they see it, what would be the impression that we get? These are ways of, you know, controlling the height. And these are ways, ways of you even knowing good designs. Let, let me show you another design. This is a design that um, a particular guy used, um, Caesar Graphics. Now, looking at this, you can easily get the message. His presence, like the major information is here. And you are seeing the host. If you want to know their name, this is their name. The time, the date, everything is here. And see the logo. So this is also a good design. Let me show you another one. This is on Patricia. Uh, Patricia. You can see this. If, 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 I, if I don't know if you guys noticed a particular sequence in all the designs I'm showing you, that you are moving your eyes from this area to this area, to this area, to this area. To this area. Looking at this design now, looking at this design, you're, you're moving your eyes from this place. You're starting from here, like from this image. Then you're coming here. Do you know the BTC Coco? Like the message is here. Then you are coming here. Bitcoin made easy. Then to this, download the app, you know. Can you, did you get the message? Let me show you another one. Look at this. This one is basically all from the top to the bottom. This is alignment. And you can see the way the designer used yellow and white to hold your attention here. The first thing you probably see is hello, June, then this table and this chest. Or you might also see this chest first before this hello, June. But I'm very sure this yellow actually will draw your attention more than this. So as a designer, even if you want to know a good design, you should be able to like see these things working out in your designs or in other people's designs so that you can call it a good design. These are the kind, that, those are the kind of flyers you keep. All the designs I'm showing you guys are designs that I saw somewhere or I received in my mail or I saw on Instagram and I saved them. So as you guys are, you're supposed to have a folder either on your system or your phone. You have a folder where you keep designs that you like. I have a folder for it. Let, let, me, let me show you, this is the folder. It's named Design Ideas. I saved a lot of designs. And this is even my new um, laptop. On my former laptop, I have a folder for product design, for logo design, for flyer design, for document, for a lot of things. Even when I see documents online, when I see um, people's documents, and I like them, I usually download them and save them. For instance, there was a time I saw um, FedEx annual report of a particular year. I'm trying to open it now so that you guys can see it. I hope you guys can see FedEx um, report. You can see a place, right? I saw this on one of that. Yeah, I think I saw it on their website. I downloaded it. 
Because I know that, okay, one day, Peter, you might need to design an ebook for someone. Even though I'm not even designing it yet. But I know one day you might need to design one. How do you get to know the structure that you should follow? How do you know when to, how do you know the, the kind of font you should use? So I can only there as a new, I've gone through it. And I'm very sure that anytime I have any, any um, work or I want to maybe play around on, with any brand at all, I'll probably come to this gap too, or any other one that I have. To see the way they use text, the way they use color, the way they arrange that. I can, let me show you another one that I have. Um, there is no FedEx. Okay, I think, let me use Agropola. I saw this on their page as well. I downloaded it because I, I like the design. Can you see? Can you see the way the image is being used and the text? Can you see? So even as you, you have to have a folder, whether physical or, can you see what is happening here? Simple, very minimal, but top notch, awesome design. You can see the, the, the document is being created. So it's not even about flyers again, even logos, sometimes. I won't see somebody's logo here. Yeah, this is one. This is a logo I saw on somebody's page on Twitter, and I saved it. You see? So if, if, even as designers, you should, you should have a folder where you keep your design inspirations. Do you understand? Whenever I see a design you like or designs that you know, you save them, keep them. So I'm just trying to show you guys more and more designs. So these are how to, these, these are different ways of you getting inspiration from designs, from other people's designs, whether online, offline, anywhere at all. That's about um, getting design ideas. Now, the next topic, the importance of having a strong message before you start designing. Very, very, very important. In fact, having a strong message is even important. What if the client doesn't give you a strong message? Should you really give a strong message yourself? I would like to use it particular project I worked on as a case study. So I'll just explain I how. I want to ask a question. Is this on concept? Did you get the idea of some message first? I didn't get the idea of that. Yeah, I said, which one comes first? Is this getting the idea first or the strong message first? Um, basically, the, the getting the idea is not necessarily so very important that it has to be the first thing you do. Getting the message first can even be the first thing you want to do. But I talked about getting the ideas because sometimes you may just keep ideas, not because you have a project, but you just keep them for future sake. But when you want to start working, of course, you have to have a message in mind. That message that you have in mind, you now determine the kind of ideas you are now bringing on board to work on that project. Do you understand? But Getting ideas is not necessarily tied to a project or whenever you want to work on a project. It's not compulsory. You can always get ideas anytime. Just like I told you, that FedEx document, I don't have any project that I want to work on, but I just saw it, I, I like it, and I downloaded it. But when you want to work, of course, you have to first have the idea, you, you know, have the message first. The message will determine where you are going to go for your inspiration, for you to seek inspiration, ideas, and you know, bring them to your board or your mood board before you start working. Do you understand? Now, when a client gives you a brief or, okay, or when you want to work on a brief, you need to first decide in your mind that what is the goal of this project? Okay, the goal of this project is for people to be able to register or it's for people to be able to click a link and go to listen to someone's podcast, or the goal of this project is for someone to be able to get a particular location and come for a class, could be anything. 
So you have to just I mean, have in mind what is the what is the idea, what is that thing that I want people to do after going through this information. Because one thing is see, especially as designers, many designers make this mistake of just designing and forgetting the client and moving on, which is actually very bad. And it's one thing that I always try to do for all my clients. Anytime I do any work for them, I always go back to ask them, the design I did for you, was it functional? Did you get the interest? Did you get the 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 um the revenue and open to get? Did you get the number of people you I don't, I just want to know. Not because I want to change the story and you know, just do a magic and you know what you want to just happen. No. But because in the nearest future, I can get another client that will call me and say, Peter, I want to do this thing, which will be similar to what I've actually done for a particular client. I'll be able to like consult work. I'll be able to tell the client that you know what? This thing you are talking about. I've done this for someone before. Do you get? So please, then let us read this way. Let's take this dimension. Let's take this route. And funny enough, most of you have actually shared that with. They're only really surprised. They're like, oh, seriously, I didn't even think about that. Thank you for sharing this idea. Let's implement what you just said. And some of them will say, no, let's use that same method that I recommended. No problem. We'll work with that. But then, if, some, if things turn out wrong, I'll just say the client, you know, I mentioned it. So you know what? Let's just redirect this thing. Some of them will say, I understand. I know you mentioned, but don't worry. I don't think I want to do it now. I want to give some time, some more time before I work on it. Do you understand? So it's always good when, as a designer, or even as a business owner, you have, you know in your mind that this project, this is that I want to do. This is the goal. And the goal has to be achieved. So how do you achieve the goal? That now depends on how you now structure your message. Do you understand? Now, how do you develop a strong message? When you get a brief, First of all, you need to first read the brief. Then think about how can you represent the message in this brief visually. I would like to use one of the a book designs that I have actually done before as a case study to explain this. So I'm trying to open it now. Once I'm done with it, I'll share my screen so that, so that you guys can see it. I did a book cover design for some people. Well, I'll, I'll just pick one because of our time so that I wouldn't. Um, because if, I, if I'm going to be using the two of them, you might not really. Uh... Now, I, I got the brief to work on this cover design and even the inner cover, inner book, inner pages as well. So I worked on it personally. Now, based on the brief I was, the brief I got was just the book. Like, this is a book, this is the title, this is what the book is about, you know. That's the, the, um, the brief I got. Now, when I, I ask some questions, I also read through the book, some part of the book, not everything, but I read some major part of the book. And I denote that, okay, this book is actually talking about how somebody grew from being a child or a baby to an adult of 22. So I thought to myself that, okay, how do I depict this? Because I want people to be able to know, even without reading the book, that the message in this book is about this, it's about growth or development. So I thought to myself, okay, I can also use silhouette of a baby crawling, or should I say a toddler, to a baby sitting, you know, to a very little child of about three or four or five. You know, you can see the growth, you can see the growth of the, of the baby from a very little child to a young adult. So even without you reading the, the, the book, without you even going through the book, you can already tell that this book is probably talking about development. Now, that is me getting the strong, the message I want to put out before I even started designing at all. Do you understand? Now, in the course of me reading the book, I came across a particular quote, which is this, how does one become a butterfly? This is it's not the client that gave me this thing to put there. I was only I read the book and I decided, oh, I think this thing should actually work well on the cover. I think this thing was in, in the introduction part, introductory part of the book. Yeah, I think it was in the introduction. So I told myself, okay, it will be good for this thing to be in this cover. Because if you look at this cover, looking at this, this transition in growth, and you read this, let me, let me zoom in so that you guys can read it. 
how does one become a butterfly? You want to learn to fly so much that you are willing to give up being a caterpillar. It is depicted here. We can call this a caterpillar, this pretty boy, a caterpillar. And this is the butterfly. So like you have to give up being in this stage. You have to like embrace growth and development so that you get to this stage. That's the message I want to pass across. That I want people to get. I don't just want to just see 22 and 22 and you start thinking, what, what's the dream? What is this about? Do you understand? So you just reading this, just going through this alone, just seeing this image, you already get the message. So when you want to design, you have to first think, what message do you want to pass across to people? What is the thing that I want them to, when they see this design, what's the first thing that hits their mind? Every design has something that hits a, 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 an audience mind. So as a designer, if you don't sit down to think of what is it that I'm going to use to eat the mind of the audience, your design is going to fail. It's not a cause, but it's the truth. Your design is going to fail. So you have to first think, okay, what message do I want to pass across? Okay, this is the message. You pick the message and you move with that message. Do you understand? So having the idea is even different from execution. Do you understand? So let, let me look for another project that I can show you. I'm state that there's something, there's something wrong with this design actually. And it is a problem, problem of typography. If you guys can notice, the F is safe. Doesn't look like an F. Uh -huh. So I must point that out first. But what I actually what I'm actually trying to uh, pass across to you guys is the fact of is the area of you guys are getting the idea of what you want to design first. This that strong message. That's the first thing I want you guys. That's what I'm trying to explain. So, but and like I said, this design has a problem of sense, and is the fact that the F you see doesn't look like an F. So that's the problem here. Now, you can see a seat belt. You, you probably ask yourself that. If you're talking about safe trip, why can't I see the image of a car? Why is seat belt? If you, if you, are, if you are familiar with traffic um, laws and you know, maybe you, have, you drive, you probably know why it, is, it has to be a belt. Because one thing is, if you want to stay safe, Especially while driving, you need to, um, you need to, um, is it buckle? Do you buckle your seat belt or you tighten your seat belt? But then you need to, you need to use your seat belt. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So I just talk about the fact that, okay, the message you're trying to pass across here is the fact that people should have a safe trip to camp. And I don't, of course, everybody would think you should, there should be a bus or a, a car, expensive loads and all. But then I just said, okay, um, I, let me just create something different. And there's something called conceptualization in design. Conceptualization is when you don't depict everything you want to say in a, in a design, but you just use an, a simple element to pass your message. There's something called what? There's something called what? I think there's a. There's something what? There's something called what? I think there's a. Conceptualization. Let, let me type it down. Conceptualization. 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 Conceptualization is from the word concept. It means that when you are designing, your design should have a concept. This should be the, the message is that concept that you want to pass across to people. The and for me, the place I used to get the best of the best conceptualization idea or ideas, let me see, is Pinterest. Let me go to Pinterest. <clears throat> let me just um try type um children's the children's the concepts or maybe design concepts whichever one 
Mm, okay, I'm not getting something like this. Let me just see. Here's the print ad. I mean, it can even be more as the, the any, anything you at all you want to do. Now, look at this. This is what we call conceptualization. Can you see? Okay, I think this is for people. And the message is saying, let them reach for their people. You can, you can see a child that has a dream of becoming a singer. And you can see the child as a grown up man with a guitar. Still talking about the child, the child growing from being a child to an adult, but with the same dream of being a musician. So this is conceptualization. It means that you are not putting all the you are not putting all the text out, but you are just creating a small image that drives home your message. <laughs> Do you get? So this is conceptualization. If you go on Instagram, and I want to try to go to Instagram. If you if you go to the site of these guys of this ad word, you will see. Different or that color. Let me let me show you another design. Mother's tea. Or let me just do um cigarettes or no smoking things out. Look at this. It says smoking cues. And you can see someone lying down. With the shape of um, the color of um, cigarette, you can see what no tobacco D. You can see this. This is conceptualization. Let me show you another one. This is another one. A warm welcome to them, meaning that if you smoke, you, have, you just you want to kill yourself, you want to die. So this is conceptualization. It means that you just use more of an image to pass in your to pass your message to the audience and use less sort of typography. This is what I did here. So it's, it's about you having the idea. You have the, the strong idea that you want to work or you want to work with. You have that first before you now go to design. So that's um we talking about the importance of having a strong message before you begin designing at all. Now how to design for your target audience. If you are designing for female, what color should you use? So your target audience also determines how you are going to, how your design will look like. For instance, if you are doing a design that is for men, that are maybe for instance, um, okay, I, I work with a, a frame brand, the name of that, frame, the name of that um, brand is Rema Frames. You can take them out for them. <coughs> Somebody is, <coughs> is not muted. And okay, I think we're doing that. Okay, good. So I said I, I, I work for a, remember a frame brand online. The name of the brand is Rema Frames. If you go to their page, you see a lot of this, um, frame designs I've done for them. Now, there's some designs that they are specifically for women. You know, they tell me, oh, this design is actually for a woman, it's for a lady. That automatically tells me that when I'm creating that design, I should think of something flowery, something about flowers. I should use fonts that are not strong, but rather fonts that are, you know, a bit fragile, or fonts that are, um, should I say tender, like fonts that are easy on the eye, that are not strong, that are not bold. Do you understand? If I design something for a baby brand, you should know that you have to use fonts that are rounded, fonts that are plenty, and you have to use plenty of colors. Because children love colors. Have you noticed that cartoons are not in black and white? Cartoons are always colorful. And please don't be surprised if I tell you that I watch cartoons a lot. In fact, I watch cartoons more than I watch normal movies. Whenever I, I go to visit my my um, sister, she has you know she has uh, children as well. So I would call them my nephew and my niece. Whenever they are watching cartoons, they are watching PDMA, I watch everything with them. 
not because I want to get the idea of I don't care. What, I really do not really. But then when it comes to the color combination that they use for the cartoons and animation, they are always very, very sleek and top notch. I look at the clothes that these cartoons are wearing. I look at the the way the animator painted their hair. Sometimes the hair could be yellow, the clothes could be purple. You know, there is this color, even though these colors are different, but there's this way he just blends them together. And I sit down to watch. Do you understand? So anytime if I want to design anything for a baby brand, I have to be thinking plenty colors. So I would I would easily remember, okay, from PJ Maxx, there is a blue, there's a green, there's a red guy, and this is the way their face looks like. This is the way the color is in command. I will easily pick and join those things together. Or maybe in SpongeBob. You know, SpongeBob has the um, yellow um, part of, of its body, then there's a brown short, then there's the socks, then there's the brown shoe. I'll be able to, okay, these are the colors I should combine. These are the colors I should have combined. So, do you understand? So, when you are creating your design, you have to be like, have this in mind. Who is my target audience? Is he a baby brand? Is he a female? Is it a male? You need to know first who you are designing for. Let me show you a sample of the works I, uh, I did for a baby brand. Look at this for a baby brand, a frame I did for a baby brand. Even though it's not very sharp. But then you can see that I use a lot of animations and I use a rounded frame. So it tells you that if you want to, the brand you want, the, the, your target audience determines how your design would look like. I hope we all, we all understand. Let me see if I, okay, yeah, I did this for a lady. God is within her, she will not fall. I can, you see the image of the lady, you can see flowers. Because when it comes to flowers, women, well, I, I, I don't want to assume, but then my own idea of um, women when it comes to design is that women are, you know, they are tenderly, just like flowers. You don't treat flowers anyhow. You don't, you don't undo the flower anyhow. I don't say fragile because Friday is not a, a very, um, may not be a very good word to use, but then I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. If, so, compared to a design I did for a male brand, look at a design for a male brand. See. See a design for a male brand. You can see a lion. When I'm talking about men, you're talking about boldness, confidence, you know, competition. Men love, that's why if you go and check, most men love football. Women are not part of them, chat. I, I, <laughs> apart from the rumor and everything, I, I don't go to watch football, but then, but I hope you get, you get what I'm trying to say. So, when you're designing something for a male brand, you know, okay, these are the kind of images you use. Now, a female actually ordered for this same, this same film, this same one you're looking at. What do I have to do? Let me show you what I did. Look at what I did. The same design. This is the male version, and this is the female version. Can you see the, the, the difference? Even though it's the same message, you can see the, a woman will easily relate with this and will easily love this because of the light, you know, the shine. Yeah, it looks beautiful. A yeah, lady will like it. But with a guy like it, well, maybe a guy will like it. But if you are showing a guy this and this, and this one, a guy will probably go for this because this is talking about strength, power. Although there are women too that they prefer strength than beauty. Of course, I have some of them as friends too. But then I hope you get like on a general note. So when you're designing, you okay. Who is my target? Oh, this one was the way you got idea of the design the other one. Okay. Sorry, I didn't get that. What did you say? I think mean, the design on the screen now. Yes. It was when you got the idea to design the other one you showed us. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, so what, what happened is that? that? Okay, no, I, I, I know what you're saying. That, did I get the idea for this design 
from this one? Is that your question? That did I get the inspiration for this design that has the love and light? Did I get the idea yeah. of it from this one? Is that what you are saying? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, Actually, yes. Okay, I, I get your question. I will answer your question now. Actually, I got the design, the inspiration for this design from another page on Instagram. Let me go to that page. Let me show you the page um, on Instagram. I hope <laughs> over time. Um, let me show you where I got the idea. <clears throat> I'll show you where I got the idea of. Actually, I actually did you want the lion first. So when we did this design, a lady said that she likes that design, but she doesn't want the lion. That it should be more designed to fit a female, you know, to look more feminine. This is where I got the idea from. This. I hope you guys can see the design keep moving with the lion. Can you guys see my screen? Nice thing? Anybody? Can you guys hear me at all? Yes, we can hear you. Can hear you. We can hear you, sir. We can hear you. Okay, okay. So what I'm saying is that I got the idea for this design. This one, this particular design. I got the idea from this page, from this design. Now, after we created this design, a lady said that she likes it. That, but it should be more feminine. So what I did was to change the image of this lion to this, because I know females would like this. So what I'm trying to let you see is the fact that, the fact that the, my audience changed from being a male to a female here, made me change the style, like made me import, use this image here. So anytime you want to design, you have to first ask yourself, am I designing for a lady, for a man, for children, you need to know the kind of people you are designing for. That will determine how your design will look like. If you are, if you are designing for a, for a man, for instance, a male, and you are doing this, then the, the guy will just look at, do you know what you are doing at all? But if you are designing something for a, for a male, and you give him something like this, like that has a lion, that shows confidence, you know, the guy will be happy. They will say, oh, oh, I like this, I like this. Yes, I'm a lion, I'm a, I'm a king. Do you understand? So you need to understand your audience before you even start designing at all. You need to understand your audience. It's very, very, very important. Even as important as your design, because if you pass the wrong message to the wrong audience, <laughs> even if your design is good, then it is useless. Do you understand? It is it's only functional. I hope you understand. It's just like if you are designing something for, for adults, for instance, maybe people that are like 60 years and above, you have to make the text of the design to be big. Because people in those days, most of them they usually have usually their eyes. Most of them use glasses, not all, but so, most of them use glasses. So just imagine if they are looking at the design when they are not with glass. You did not suspend your design and start looking for their glass. Before, before you know it, you will, your design will not turn in income for your customer. But it means that the design is not functional, even though it's good, but it's not functional. If you are designing something for youth, you have to do something that is colorful. Not so colorful, but then it should be a touch of probably yellow, touch of green, touch of blue, you know, things that you to relate to it. And you have to use trendy things. For instance, when they were, uh, you know, currently, something that is trending currently now is cut soap for me, cut soap for me. So if you do a design about cut soap for me and you put soap somewhere or you add someone holding soap in one hidden place, it's, people will be able to relate more with it than if you just add cut soap and you're using a house, something. Do you understand? So, visual organization is basically about hierarchy and you directing the eye of your audience, which was when I mentioned that when you want to design, you have to design from the left to the right because your audience reads from the left to the right. So, for instance, if you look at this design, let me share, let me share my screen.
If you look at this design, the message starts from here, from the middle here. From here to here to here to here down here. You can see that's visual organization. How do you organize your the elements on your on your page? Let me go to my personal page and show you some more things related to this. Now look at this. This is what you are probably going to see first. This girl with the um with the tab. <clears throat> Now, visual, like my own visual organization is this design starts from here actually, because this is where the logo is located. But the message starts from here. It's basically from here, down here, then here. Or you can start from here, 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 and here. Do you understand? This is not a major message. It's not major. And also do not forget that rules are meant to be broken. But please and please, this thing, eh, this thing cover me. When I started designing, the rules are meant to be broken. And anytime I'm designing, I'm always trying to find a way to break rules and I end up doing ugly and bad designs. Rules are meant to be broken. That is the truth. Even it applies to life, not even about uh, this class. Even. It applies to everything we do. Rules are meant to be broken. But before you break rules, you need to understand the rules first. If you want to break any rule, you need to first understand you, like know the rule, like the back of your hand. So that, so that even when you sleep, when your eyes are closed, you can even do a design obeying some particular rules. So if you understand the rule very well, by the time you want to break that rule, you will know when you are breaking it and you know when you are doing the rubbish. So don't do rubbish and hide under the pretense of I'm breaking rule, I'm breaking rule. No, that will not help. It didn't help me too when I when I try to do it. So when you want to break, you go to break rules. Do not get me wrong, it's good to break rules. But before you break rules, understand the rules very very well before you break it at all so i just want to see okay <clears throat> let's look at this again now for this brand this logo is always on this on this angle if you if you check it's always on this side always on this side even here too it's always on this side so but if you look at the message is Coming from right, from left to right. Here too. From left to right. Sometimes, of course, you can work with the middle, like what we have here. Maybe it's just here. And here too, it's just in the middle. Do you understand? So this is what we call central alignment. <clears throat> when you put your um your your elements in the middle. Of your page. Looking at this, this is there for the free class. You can see basically from here down here. And you can see the use of lines, the use of colors, you know, all those things. Don't I will suggest that before you guys start designing as starters, try to sketch first. I can see the code very when I started designing them. I have a very big book. The book has about the book has about, um, if I can recall, about 120 pages or 150 pages of A4. And I was able to use that book to jot ideas down, to sketch ideas. So, trust me, supposed to have a jotter where you um, jot ideas down. Very, very important. This is funny. Okay. The secret of designing a shape. Now, the use of shape on your designs actually gives your design a little bit of trendy vibes. And there are a lot of people that do that as well. So if you, are, if you want to design with, if you want to do your designs, try as much as possible to use shapes once in a while. No matter how little, try as much as possible to use shapes. It's, it helps, it enhances your the visibility of your design. Then the design process. I'm supposed to go to the design process, but before that. Visual hierarchy, of course, that's what I talked about for um, visual organization. What, what should come first, what should come second, what should come next. Now, I know you guys have your daughters. This is another time for you to write. How to effectively, how to effectively use the right image for your designs. How do you get images? This is typographic knowledge. 
Now, I want a design I will talk about typography. And I don't want to use any image in this design, just text. Just text. So I don't want these fonts. I want a font that typography is an old thing. It's not something that started this year. It's a very old thing. So I, I would want to use a font that is serif. Not this is it's not a serif font. So I would rather want to use something that is serif. So um one serif font that I love so much is GM serif. I just type them on the font and it to come up. So GM serif display. You can see this is the font. I love this font very well. So and I use it in some of my works too. This is me doing a sort of alignment. Now, what is photographic storage all about? Or oh, another thing you could do, and that's one thing about design, there's usually no straight road to everything you are doing. Sometimes you just have to try some things, remove some things. So I'm trying I'm trying something else. I'll see if it's going to work. I can see typo and graphics, like graphic design, typo graphics. <clears throat> I would want to use another font here. Cutting. No, about color, let's just ask some color, some sort of color. Or probably, let me just try something. Let's, let's make it black and white. Give something that is possible.
dikasih guys so this is just is now can you guys hear me oh yes i think i'm sleeping already Abel, I'll meet. I'm not sleeping, no. I'm listening to you. Abel, what about you? I hear you. I hear you. Uh-huh. Now, yeah. looking at this, I love to hear this. Okay, one. Well. Yeah, I think I want to. Let me see. Let's just see this one. Now, looking at this design, <clears throat> how do you guys see the design? Typographic knowledge font use, coloring, and development. Meaning that we're talking about how to use fonts, that's typography, how to color typography, and how to develop typography. Now, this is a simple design, but when it comes to visual organization, this is the first thing you probably see, this typographic knowledge. Then you see this font use, coloring, and development next. Then you see follows clearly, then or don't joke. Now, this is a way of me trying to control your eye. I want you to start making from here. And that funny thing is that designers do sometimes this, for them to do something like this. And I, I also did, I did a lot, in fact, a lot. Looks like this. Can you see? This automatically calls your attention. And some will do something like this. Can you see this? This automatically will call your attention. You'll be wondering, why, why did the person do this? The person usually, some people usually have a reason for doing this, but sometimes they don't have a reason. They just do it just to call, just to hold your attention, to have you thinking, looking at design over and over and over again. There's some designs that I've done like that here, but I just purposely do something to just hold your attention. For instance, like the one I did for my church one time, uh, let me let me just try to look at it. Don't worry, the, the class will soon in, so it's not going to like this, like this one. So if you ask me what is the reason for this yellow here, it's basic basically to just hold your attention to let you see the Jesus that yes, of, of course you can say Jesus gives hope and gives life and all, but when I was designing it, the major reason I had was just basically to hold people's attention so that they can keep on reading this thing over and over and over again. Do you understand? So that's basically about visual hierarchy. Sorry. What's the next? Um, that's visual organization rather. Now, lastly, lastly, before we go, lastly, the design process. Let's just talk about the design process. Lastly. Um, no. It's not going to take much of our time at all. It's, it's very easy for people. Now, this is the design process. When it comes to design process, the first thing you do is to define, you first get the problem, you analyze the problem. Okay, this is the problem. You want to create a flyer. Then you collect information. What do we need for us to, for us to create this flyer? You gather the information to you. Then you brainstorm. Brainstorming is basically about you thinking that, okay, what color should I use? How do I work on it? Should I make it A4? Should I make it a square? Should I make it a rectangle? Should it be should it be color black? Should it be white? You know, you basically think about it and you after thinking, then you develop. That's when you learn the cheat. This brainstorming session is a part where you stretch. After brainstorming, then you develop. You mean that you develop the the idea. You go to the, do the actual design. You create a design, then you share, you will send the design to the clients or whoever gave you the, the work to do. The person will give you your feedback, then you improve the design. After the feedback, you go and you know, work on the design, change the things that need to be changed, you know, and off. You get so the, the process is endless. When you improve design, when you finish a decent design, there might still be a problem with the design. So when is when, when there's a problem with the design, you have to identify the problem. What is the problem? You think about it. You collect information, you brainstorm out to work on it, you develop it, share it for feedback. Improve, you know, it's it's an endless process. The assignment is this. 
create a design for Happy Democracy Day for Nigeria. Democracy Day was just a um, few days ago. Uh -huh. So let's just create just a design, a simple design. And I'm already thinking that, okay, if you want to... So the reason why I keep Democracy Day is because there are a lot of designs on Democracy Day out there. Plenty. The ones that they did for uh, three days ago, the one for last year, the one, the one for last three years, last three years, everything is online. So I want you to go online, do your research. All the process, all the process that we've talked about. So I will ask you guys as well, Happy Democracy Day for Project Studios. The Nigerian flag, and there's a yellow, uh, this, is, this yellow is, is the part of the exam meetings for Project Studios. So, but for my own, there's no message. So, but for your own, I want you to put a message. Put a message under this text. But what I just want is just Happy Democracy Day. If you want to put any logo, go online, get any logo you want to. If you want to create your own logo, fine, put it. But I want to see Happy Democracy Day with a short message. And then I want to repeat it, it's fine by me. Yeah, so in case you are watching this on YouTube, please, that's my first thing to subscribe. Very, very important. Thank you. And comment and like and all those things. You guys can drop off the comment.